Hello everybody and welcome back. Caleb here and uh, while I didn't have a huge amount of time to work this week, we did make some milestones. So uh, let me share those with you. And of course, the first one being a magical, magical, brilliant light. Yes. Now, of course, the chandelier isn't there or anything like that, but having light up here is amazing. And equally, if we look up there on the wall and I flip this switch, the lights go off up there as well because we have one light up there. So you saw me and John do the wiring here. This is a spare one. Don't worry about that. It's not live or hot. It's not connected to anything. But so we have one three-way switch here that turns everything on and off. If we come back here by the refrigerator, we got one four-way switch here that turns it all off as well. And then if we head to the second floor, we've got the last switch that turns everything on and off. And up here in the second floor hallway, next to the old panel box right there, we have the other lights. So, you know, super duper exciting stuff because this is one of the darkest parts of the house, especially right here, especially at night. You can't see anything around here. Uh, same thing down there where the other light is. You cannot see anything down there at night. It is super dark. So having these lights super, super helpful for navigating the house at night. And well, I mean, you know, it's light. It's just helpful in general. I mean, look how much brighter it looks here. Let me take a step back. See, isn't that brilliant? Oh, all the light. Love it. And look, we can do things like, oh, much easier to see the original wallpaper. Oh, super nice. Or since we're in the hallway here underneath the light, I can show you guys the original panel box, you know, and way more color <laughs> or way more brightness, let's say, because uh, with a flashlight it doesn't do it any kind of justice, but with an actual light, much nicer. So grandpa made that happen for me this week. Thank you so much, Grandpa. Uh, you got to see him uh, in the time lapse. He is amazing. So yeah, new lights. Love it, love it, love it. Love the brightness. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see more of these things fire. This is officially the first one on the second floor on, so that's always good. Also, for those who reach out and um, said uh, you know kind words about Buddy and my grandparents, thank you for that. They really appreciated that, so. They wanted to let you know that, and I personally want to let you know that as well. So thank you all for the kind words. Up here on the second floor light, you might have noticed that there's a ring around up there. That was actually this covering that, which is this old, uh, probably 20s, 30s. You see the little screws there. This would have held probably like a milk glass dome or something like that. Um, and that's what was up there probably in, you know, well, 20s, 30s again, right? It was originally a gas line. You can see the gas line sticking up right there. So originally it would have been a gas fixture, but this is what somebody had modified that with at some point. Now, because this was up there, it ended up concealing this, which is some pretty nice wallpaper. So it's good to have a few more fragments. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera very well, but if you hold some of this in a certain way, this is actually gold. Um, so it's gold ink or you know gold colored ink. And so it shimmers really nicely if you get it in the right light. And I don't think I'll be able to do it here. But so that was a pretty cool find this week. Um, it's good to know that maybe this is something that would have been on the ceiling. Uh, maybe it's original. Maybe it's not. Uh, I don't know which way I lean necessarily. But it is really cool. And it might be a thing to look into for the ceiling, uh, especially in the hallway. So, yeah, I'll uh, see what I can find more information about this paper I find one or Maybe I can find one that's extremely similar that I could use for reference. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. The next thing I really wanted to talk about was my buddy Justin, um, who I've talked about a few times. He brings me all sorts of things. In fact, the couches from last week, he, he found those for me at an estate sale. Um, he's an estate sale uh, person, so he's out all the time. I know you're watching, Justin, so hello. Uh, eventually, I'll have to get you on the, the vlog itself, or the, the, I don't know what they call this, the YouTube itself. Um, he has a buddy who works or who loves the 1904 World's Fair. And I know some of you, if you're local, you know about that. But it's something that St. Louis really appreciates a lot. It's the, the World's Fair that we had here. Um, and he had a guy go through and search through the house of machinery uh, that was at the World's Fair uh, for photos and see what he could find. 
And lo and behold, he found two photos of the Holland Brown Company, which for those who aren't in the know, Holland Brown, uh, Mr. Brown is the guy who built my house. Um, it's what made the money for this house was this machinery. And they were at the World's Fair and they found two photos of them like presenting there. And they're really high res because they're glass plate and they're absolutely amazing. And, you know, it, it, I always get, you know, a little bit of a tingle when, you know, you get to see something from the past that relates so closely to people. I go and visit it in a graveyard or whose house I'm, you know, currently restoring. Like it's really amazing to find more pieces of their story. And uh, these are huge pieces of their story, huge historical pieces. And um, I can't wait to get these printed and put up in the house because they're awesome. So uh, I just want to share that with you guys. Again, Justin, thanks for reaching out and trying to make that happen. Like you're uh, a madman and I love you. Thank you so much, man. Also uh, found this little note from uh, Twyla in uh, the mailbox. Uh, sorry I missed you. Um, but uh, I'm glad you stopped by anyways. Uh, I hope the house uh, was everything you dreamed and, and more. So, uh, but I uh, appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Okay, so we've been dealing with so much lighting recently and, and electrical and stuff. I thought it was probably time to go ahead and start organizing the lights I've uh, purchased and uh, some that my father has purchased. Uh, he went on a binge like one week and bought like four of them. Um, so uh, we're gonna go and uh, show you guys what I've done to try to help me organize and keep the, all of my lighting kind of together and safe and uh, well display it a little bit nicely as well that way I can kind of pick what I want for each room so uh, let me walk you through the new light shop that basically my basement has become <laughs> so as you can see lots and lots of lighting I think I have seven or eight of them hung here uh, this isn't everything I have, but it's most everything I have. Um, so most, as you can see, are the half gas, half electric. Uh, even though these have been electrified, this would be a gas fitting. So upturn gas, downturn electrical. So that's those. Uh, same thing here. Uh, this is, I think, a 4-4 fixture. So four gas, four electric. Um, but these one, these fittings are wrong. This one's kind of wrong in general. <laughs> so uh, that one needs a lot of work. Uh, this one is has one of its arm missing, but uh, it's, it's not actually missing. I have it. It just came off. So I need to put that one back on there. And actually these two here are fairly similar. Again, another transitional half gas, half electric. Uh, I think you're all noticing a train here. This is a 2-2 two, two, half gas, half electric. So two uh, gas, two electric. And uh, this is that weird one that had the uh, the brass kind of cups uh, that I don't understand because light doesn't emit through them. Um, so not sure exactly where that's gonna go, but it's a really pretty piece and uh, we'll find a home for it somewhere here in the house, of course. Um, this here is Kim's chandelier that we got last week from uh, David. So uh, yeah, needs a lot of work um, just to kind of put it back together. Uh, David said he pulled this out of a trash can. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine throwing that away? Like, I mean, how dare you? <laughs> Such a beautiful piece. Then we have this huge, huge thing, uh, which is like the old kerosene lamp. It's pretty nice though. Uh, I think we're actually gonna use this for our bathroom up on the third floor, which I think will be perfect for that. Because uh, this, you know, being a kerosene piece would have been more of a, a country home for kind of fixture. Uh, this house always had uh, city gas, as they call it. So, you know, gas lines that ran into the house. This one you would have to put oil in and light the oil. So uh, yeah, kerosene. So moving down the line here, we have this piece here, which is actually a pretty special one for the house because my uncle Jason gave me this. Uh, it's from his frat house and he was able to uh, take it out before they tore the house down. So this is a survivor piece and it's a really a pretty one for sure. Uh, they painted it, I guess the fraternity color. So uh, I'll have to strip all that off. Um, but you know, really nice piece. It is an electrical one. So it probably will make its way to either the third floor or, um, I don't know, yeah, probably the third floor. It should be a really nice piece there, but, you know, probably about 19 teens or maybe a little earlier, that 1900 when this piece was built. It's a really pretty one. They also gave me this really super cool spigot, which I'm going to use on the side of the house. It's from some historic house. I'm not exactly for sure where. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's like a quail up there. And actually it is the handle. So you would turn the quail to turn on or off the water. And uh, it still works. The seal's good. Somebody's done some work to it at some point because the, uh, the seal seems pretty good and tight. So 
That's definitely going to be well in the house because, I mean, who has a, you know, a quail for a, a spigot? <laughs> That's pretty cool. This piece here is from Hannibal. Uh, you can see it is a, uh, a gas piece, but I don't know that this is necessarily originally gas or there's something going on here because, so let's take this one for example. This one here has a gas key, but you can turn the gas key still. Now there's a wire in the way, so it won't turn all the way, but it has the possibility to, to turn. This one doesn't. This one's, uh, well, it's one solid piece. This is all one piece right here. Let me come to the other side actually. So you can see, this is all one cast piece. So that's how you can pretty easily tell if something's faked as far as like a gas piece, um, because these will always be one piece like that because they don't bother to make it full functional. They're just aesthetically like that. So uh, not probably a very terribly old piece, but uh, if I don't end up using this, there's a lot of pieces of it I think I will use. And I think lastly here for this one, this is another one that I was saying isn't a real one because these are all, again, one cast piece. There's no turn to them. Uh, there's no way for them to turn. They're not multiple pieces. Um, so, you know, it's a reproduction. It's a pretty reproduction. It's also, it also doesn't have any electrical arms. It only has the gas, which uh, a good portion of the house, I think, was always only just gas. I think may, probably only the first floor was actually ever both. But, you know, still... A uh, nice piece. Um, again, if anything, there's uh, enough parts here or, you know, something I can do with it. It's still kind of cool. Actually, you know, now that it's down here in the basement, this is kind of where I want to do that bar anyways. It doesn't have a long enough pipe to really go many other places in the house, but down here it could work. Maybe this is a bar light. Of course, you've seen all the chandeliers and uh, you saw basically none of them have any other glass on them. And that's where this is ended up being stored. So. Got a lot of etched. These are the gas fittings, and obviously these smaller fittings are for the electrical. Uh, but you see I have uh, quite an assortment so far. Been collecting some with a bit of color, like that one. Uh, some of these are reproductions. Some of these are, you know, from, you know, you know 1890s-ish to probably 1910-ish. Uh, um, these are those ones that go on that, uh, that brass one in the far corner that I don't understand how light comes through them, but cool regardless. Uh, some half gas, half electric sconces. These are reproductions. Um, these are not. These are originally gas um, sconces here, but these ones actually go in the library because they have very east-like details up here, like the gas key here, which is pretty nice, which uh, really works with the fireplace in that room. So I think around the bookshelf, these ones will go there, and uh, that's the... Uh, glass shade for these ones. So, you know, lots and lots of glass. Uh, these are for that huge, huge one on the side. And uh, I also have these, two of these, which uh, that's what was back in these plastic here. I had to open it up because um, they're my absolute favorite. They're really brilliant. I don't know what light comes, or what light looks like coming through them, but I'm sure they're amazing. Oh yeah, pretty brilliant. So you can kind of see some of the color there. These ones are amazing. And uh, these are definitely going to get used in the house. The chandelier that these ones came off of that is actually in pieces at my current place. Uh, I've been kind of slowly working on restoring it in my uh, downtime when I'm not working on the rest of the house. Um, and I regretfully say that I haven't done very much on it probably in the last month. But uh, it's all together. It's all in one big box. I know how to put a bed together. And I uh, can't wait to get either these shades on that or on one of these other amazing pieces I have. Then I have uh, these two little brass guys hanging out down here. Um, this is a full electric one. I love the bends in it though. Like that's a, a, a very nice look, especially with the house aesthetically, it works quite well. And this would have been a gas, uh, two, uh, two gas. This could be perfect for like maybe the bathroom downstairs or something like that, just something smaller. And then up in this box, there's also some more sconces and other things. Let me see if I can touch you guys down in there. So hopefully you can see some things down there. There's a whole bunch of sconces and stuff. More Justin finds. It's just all around good stuff. So yeah, all the lighting, way more organized now. Now I know what I have. It's not just in boxes hanging around in the parlor, which is what all those boxes were in there. So cool, lighting all sorted out. And lastly this week, uh, we have a bit of, well, somewhat troubling news We're we're on we're starting to try to figure it out. Uh, we've been contacting some people to help us out with it. So 
But this valve here is causing me problems. Um, as you can see, it's wet, it's leaking, it's been leaking, um, and uh, occasionally it will shoot water <laughs> straight up into the, the floorboards, which isn't great. Uh, so I haven't been able to run the boiler, which means the boiler is uh, not functional right now. The boiler itself, no problem, but I do need to really get that, that valve going. Supposedly the, uh, the water intake guy is having some problems and my pressure gauge is having some problems. Uh, that'd be the pressure gauge right there. It's showing, oh, I don't know, 24, 23-ish uh, PSI, which uh, if you know anything about boilers is ridiculously high and that's because it's broken. Uh, this should be about two PSI. <laughs> Boilers are very, very low pressure systems, and uh, that's not right. Uh, we also have um, the water tube here, the glass tube. Uh, it's leaking a little bit, and that shows your water level inside the boiler. So um, a few minor things that are wrong. So a valve, a uh, water sensor, uh, a glass tube, and a pressure sensor that are all not working fully. Um, the parts are all on order, so we should have them hopefully shortly. Um, of course, these little things aren't like the water gauge and the pressure sensor, all that stuff isn't stopping me from running it. But this leak here is because every time I turn it on, about 10 minutes later, this thing starts spewing water out of it. And that's not good. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have this fixed hopefully shortly because it's starting to get rather cold here in Missouri. And uh, I don't want anything else freezing up down here because that would certainly not be fun. All right, guys, so that's the end of our episode, and I know not a lot happened this week, as I told you guys at the beginning, but I also told you guys last week, you know, Thanksgiving, everything else gets a little chaotic for me. I don't have as much time to spend here. Uh, next week, that won't be a problem, but uh, so, you know, a little light this week, but uh, I'm sure you all forgive me. <laughs> I, I hope you all, uh, at least all of you who are in the U.S., had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your guys' families. Uh, I know I did with mine. So as always, 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 Thank you so very much to the best YouTube audience that uh, anyone's ever had. Um, I'll put money on that. <laughs> um, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of you guys this week. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.